good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm David Smith. Uh, this time I'm here with my R Consortium hat on. Uh, I'm a member of the board of directors of the R Consortium, along with several other people that are here today. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the R Consortium, it was put together about three years ago now uh, to work with uh, and provide support for uh, key organizations and groups that develop, maintain, distribute, and use R. And to that end, uh, we at the R Consortium thought it would be a good idea to help with that mission to actually do a bit of a survey of R users around the world. Uh, so we put this together last year. Um, it was actually announced at the last uh, Use R conference. Uh, we wanted to do a survey of R users worldwide. Um, spent a lot of time together in the committee putting together the list of questions and how they'd be asked. Uh, with particular help from Andre de Vries, uh, who spent a lot of his career designing surveys. Uh, in the end, we ended up with 29 survey questions, uh, which were originally provided in English, and then we soon after translated into China, Spanish and two dialects of Chinese. Uh, the survey was first opened on July the 1st last year, um, and then for the purposes of this analysis, uh, we closed that two months later. Uh, on August the 31st, and this is the first opportunity we've had to share those results, so you'll be the first people to see them. Uh, we did get a uh, really good response to this survey. Um, in addition to tweeting it out and announcing it on the R Consortium blog, uh, it was also included in a Computer World article and various other places. So we got um, just about 4,000 responses, just under, um, from R users around the world. As you might expect, given the topic, uh, almost all of those respondents were actual R users, 98%. Uh, the remaining 2% of users reported in the survey that uh, they had either used R in the past, uh, but didn't any longer, or were planning to use R in the future. Um, There's lots and lots of really, really great information included in that survey. Uh, a lot of them had open-ended uh, fields uh, for text responses, and lots of people took really good opportunity of that. Uh, I'll provide some summaries of that later on, um, but that's actually one of the things that caused us a little bit of a problem in that we, we did plan to release the survey data uh, as open data for people to, to respond to, but then we realized there was so much self-identifying information uh, available in that from those responses that that causes some issues, and I'll bring that up again at the end of the talk. Anyway, first of all, let's have a look at the respondents. Um, R is used all around the world. Um, you can see uh, the density of responses in people in Europe and North America, uh, but also in places like Africa and South America, here in Australia. And a special shout out to the two respondents that came to us from Antarctica. Uh, very awesome to see. Um, I, by the way, this is not related to this talk, but I have heard anecdotally that R is also included on the uh, International Space Station. Um, but there wasn't a way to click on that in the little map that came out of the survey. <laughs> Um, just having a look at some broad demographics uh, of the respondents, uh, we asked people about their age and their gender. Um, first of all, having a look at the age responses there at the top, um, something that's really encouraging and quite surprising to me to see is that the modal response uh, in terms of age was that uh, age bracket of 25 to 34. You know, especially when you consider that R is software that's been around for just about 20 years now, um, that really does reflect, in my opinion, a huge influx of new users. Uh, that are continuing to come to the R ecosystem. So that's a, that's a really great sign, to my mind, of, of a really healthy community. Uh, in terms of the gender breakdown, um, about, um, I think it was about 14% uh, of the respondents self-identified as female in this particular survey. Um, there's been a lot of great efforts within the R community around diversity and promoting participation uh, by people, f uh, by women and uh, underrepresented minorities. Uh, our ladies in particular is doing an amazing job on that. And I'll have some more to say about that later on in the talk as well. In terms of how people use R, uh, we did ask several questions about uh, how people uh, use R at work or what they use it for. Uh, people, of course, use R in conjunction with other tools a lot, a lot of the time, but 83% of those respondents did say they use R as their primary uh, data analysis tool. Uh, I was also quite surprised to find that 88% of the respondents use R for work. I mean, these are pretty much almost all professionals, whether working in academia or working in industry, uh, but everybody's using R for work pretty much. And of those, 37% uh, are using R in a production capacity. 
So there's an R for some automated system that, that people rely on within their organization. So that to me was really awesome as well. And a similar number have been using R uh, for more than five years. So there's a fair bit of experience in this respondent set as well. In terms of where people work, um, most of the respondents did come from the academic sector, um, about 35% or so. Uh, but then uh, the next uh, most popular uh, workplace was the technology sector. Uh, also a bit of a surprise, I kind of expected to see the traditional things like finance and pharmaceuticals and manufacturing popping up here, but as you can see, technology is the second most popular, uh, followed by government at the third level there. Oh, and just by the, uh, well, I meant to mention that over, overall, 35% uh, of the respondents were from the academic sector, and the remaining 65% were from industry. We also asked a question of how people interact with R, uh, what interface or GUI that they used, and far and away, uh, R Studio was the most popular uh, of the respondents to this particular survey. 90% uh, uh, use R via R Studio. Uh, people were able to select multiple uh, answers to this particular response, so the numbers don't add up, add up to 100%. Uh, but the next most popular after that was direct at the command line, uh, followed by the, uh, the base R GUI that's provided by the R core team. We also asked some questions around uh, what kind of things people have done with R. This was really sort of a goal to see people's sort of level exp expertise and depth in working with the R ecosystem. And as you can imagine, most people uh, use R functions to analyze data, and that's what it's there for. That's not a surprise. Uh, but then sort of going down in terms of levels of increased sophistication, uh, people using um, R uh, with loops and conditional, sort of basic programming type things. Uh, people writing their own R functions, you know, that also um, accounts for more than 80% of the responses. When we get down to people writing packages, uh, we found that 37% of all the respondents to this survey had either written a package, um, either for themselves or for publication, or had contributed to a package. So this is the number here for people that have written their own R package, and those people that have shared a package on GitHub, RForge, or similar platforms. And down here is the number of people that have, have written a package and released it to CRAN. Um, also, a significant number of people here have contributed to our packages written by others. Uh, we asked questions about what other data analysis tools uh, the respondents use in addition to R. Uh, Roger mentioned in his keynote this morning that Microsoft Excel is the most popular data analysis software, and that's not refuted by this particular survey here. Um, but the next most popular uh, package used in conjunction was Python, and in fact, 44% uh, of the respondents use Python in conjunction which, uh, with R, which I thought was an interesting uh, uh, response. Uh, somehow the, um, the label for this particular one got messed up, but that one should say um, other, um, other spreadsheets other than Excel, which is also a popular choice for people to use in conjunction with R. There was also a lot of discussion when we were designing this survey about trying to find out what people, what kind of data people used and what people meant by big data. Um, and so the way that manifested itself in the survey was to ask people what is the typical data size that you use in terms of number of rows. And if you have a look at these uh, top three responses here, you can see that 17% uh, of the respondents to the survey analyze, typically analyze data of 100 million records or more. So you might consider that to be in the realm of big data. And then there's the remaining 80% um, or so of people that use uh, analyzed data sets more than that typically. So it does seem like R is, does have some applications in the big data realm, but is typically used, at least by this survey, uh, with relatively small data sets. We also wanted to get a sense uh, from the survey of what people thought about R and how satisfied they were with it. Uh, there was a question in the survey asking people, you know, how satisfied are you uh, from completely satisfied to very satisfied to neutral and so on and so forth. And from that, uh, as you might expect from the self-selected sample, 80% uh, of the respondents were either completely satisfied or very satisfied by their use of R. But I think some of the interesting breakdowns came uh, from having a look at specific uh, satisfaction scores that they gave to various aspects of R. Um, at the uh, higher end, uh, people were very pleased with things like the breadth of gram packages that were available, uh, the statistical algorithms that were available in R, and the R visualization tools. But on the lower ends of the satisfaction scores, you can see things like the ability to interface into other languages, uh, the speed and performance of R code, and using R as a general purpose uh, programming language. 
those types of sentiments comes up in the in the next two questions as well where we had a more um, sort of free text uh, response to the question you know what is the best aspect of working with R um, this is a word cloud uh, that we put together from those free text responses and you can see that community by and, by and large is the most frequent response word that came up in those responses uh, and just uh, reading through them um, sort of skimming across the list you could definitely see that community was definitely a key theme for people in terms of what they like best about working with R, uh, the people in the community, uh, the availability of community resources, uh, interacting with people online and in the real world uh, all came up. Um, the R language itself uh, was obviously a popular part of using R. People liked programming in the language. Uh, they liked packages and the availability and breadth and capabilities of those packages and the various online resources that are available to them. And you might see some other interesting things when you actually have a look at the, the frequency breakdown of those terms from that word cloud. As you can expect, community is there on the top uh, for the things they like the best, followed by package, data, that generally referred to um, abilities of doing data analysis, ease of use, analysis, flexibility, and language. And we asked the converse question as well. Uh, what is the worst aspect of working with R? Um, this one here, the big one, packages, um, that sort of came under lots of different things. It was about hard to find packages, hard to know which packages were best, a lot of overlap and duplication in capabilities of packages that sort of crossed over a whole lot of different, different themes. Uh, but other things that came up when we have a look at the, uh, the breakdowns include things like um, performance and memory issues when using R, um, some unfriendlinesses in the docs and the error messages, um, some challenges in bringing R into production environments, and there were quite a lot of comparisons to Python, uh, especially when it came to um, general purpose programming uses. So as I mentioned, this survey was done uh, by the R Consortium to help us learn more about the R community, and uh, as you saw also, it was completed about a year ago, uh, and there have been some impacts um, in the R Consortium's activities in terms of internally funded projects and projects that have been funded uh, based on community proposals uh, based on, the, on this survey. Uh, for example, just having a look at the international distribution of R users, uh, we put a lot more focus into that, particularly around the R localization project that was funded uh, by the uh, ISC, the committee that funds the projects. Uh, in terms of access of data, there's the DBI project, which is hoping to streamline the process of connecting R to databases. Uh, with respect to packages um, and infrastructure, um, there's a new project that's just been funded uh, to improve the way that R builds uh, its own binaries and also the binaries for packages to make things easier there. Uh, in terms of the places people work, um, looking at medicine and pharma as sort of key opportunities uh, for, for bringing more R usage there. There's a couple of working groups that have been uh, funded and a couple of projects that are, that are going underway, a couple of um, conferences rather that are going underway soon. And with respect to that uh, sort of uh, participation by women and uh, people of underrepresented minorities, the R Community Diversity and Inclusion Working Group has also been started up by the R Consortium. And if you, can have a, if you want to check out all of the projects, by the way, that have been, been funded, you can have a look at that link right there. Just one last thing on the front of packages. Um, there were lots of questions around, you know, how can I be sure I can rely a package? How can I um, know that it's been validated? Those kinds of questions. Something that the Linux Foundation has undertaken. Uh, the R Consortium, by the way, is an organization that is hosted underneath the Linux Foundation. Uh, they put together a, um, a project around best practices for co uh, core infrastructure initiative, the, the core infrastructure initiative. And as it happens, um, several R packages have already self-submitted themselves to be validated against this. It checks things like you know, continuous integration, a website, use of cryptography, expertise and developers, all those kinds of things. And there's a list of R packages, including the, the R matrix package included in the base system uh, that have been validated against this standard. And if you are a package developer, I do encourage you to check out this initiative and consider self-submitting your own package uh, for validation. So just to wrap up, I'd um, just like to acknowledge some people that really helped with this. I've mentioned already Andre de Vries, uh, who put together the survey and conducted most of its execution. Uh, on the analysis side, I particularly want to acknowledge uh, Mark Hornick from Oracle and Augustina Ragwitz from IBM, who did a lot of the analysis that I've shown in the slides today. Uh, John Murtick is the staff, staff member from the R Consortium that helped a lot with putting this together. And none of this could have happened, uh, including all of the projects that I mentioned without the funding uh, from the R Consortium members. 
Uh, the way the R Consortium works is we take funding uh, from our members and then redistribute that out to the community and our projects. Uh, there are many members, which you can see on the website, but in particular, I want to acknowledge the Platinum members, uh, Microsoft, IBM, R Studio, and the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. And lastly, I mentioned that issue with releasing the data and anonymizing it. If you are an expert in anonymizing survey data and would like to help us so we can release that out to the community for further analysis, please reach out to me or any of the R Consortium members, and we'd love to talk to you about how we can facilitate that. And with that, I'll say thank you. Mark, yeah. The question is, does anybody have access to the Stack Overflow survey results? Um, I know one person, uh, <laughs> Julia Silga from Stack Overflow, um, I don't think they have released um, itemized uh, responses from that, probably for many of the same reasons. Yeah. Uh, I know last, when they did that last year, David Robertson did a, a sort of a blog post focused around our responses from that survey. Uh, might be worthwhile checking in with Julia to see if she's planning to do something this year. Yeah. Madeline. Um, I actually haven't looked at the verbatims that mention the word people, so I'm not sure, but the, the diversity working group was mainly prompted by the sort of the distribution of the gender representation. Uh, people. <laughs> there are ironies everywhere. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.